Good afternoon, Scott Rutherford, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. So it is Monday and the first day of the week is behind us. Futures started off pretty weak, you know, based on the fact that uh, Japan said that they're going to be in a recession, that GDP was 1.7% versus 2.2%. They were down uh, 3%, but Europe kind of yawned and said, okay, let's put Japan over there. And then our markets wound up, you know, going green. So if you tried to short the spiders based on, you know, the, the news in Japan, you probably didn't, didn't do so well. If uh, you had a spider hedge on and you covered half and then you looked to buy some strong stocks in your portfolio approach, that made a little bit more sense. But even that could have been a little tricky today as, you know, I, I've been seeing some of these divergences over the past week start to add up. So I'm pretty light. I just want to go through some charts and talk a, a little strategy. So here you go with the spiders. Overall, you know, this V bottom that you saw here is very much intact. You know, taking back the 200 day gap and go right here, another gap and go right here. This gap actually uh, <laughs> traded into it, I think, for 30 minutes that day, and now all of a sudden we're going sideways again. Sideways is considered corrective action because it consolidates a move. So at this particular point, still above the eight day, this trend has been very, very strong. So until that changes, you know, I wouldn't do anything too different here, especially don't roll up the shorts or go all in short here based on action in other sectors. Okay, you can always add, you know, after a gap down if it doesn't get filled or whatever. You know, your, your high here is 204.83. So going across the board, though, you look at the IWM. All right, so here you go. All right, a lot of guys out there bash the IWM. You know, since this red dog reversal right here, it's been a very nice trade for some guys. It broke this downtrend here, went sideways, Gopped above, reclaimed all the moving averages. Then recently, you know, we talked about this flag pattern that gave you some follow through. And then all of a sudden right here, you had your first red dog reversal engulfing day. Something you have not seen uh, during the course of this entire move except for right here. Okay, and that wound up being a bit of a trap. So I did go home short that day and I covered on Friday. And we said, let's see what happens next with the Russell. Okay, and the Russell actually closed on the lows. So if you wanted to be short something, this is what you should be short, okay? And it kind of broke this trend also. So the question is, does it hold uh, 115.28 or do you see um, a retest of the 21 day um, somewhat like what the bios did? So if you've been rolling up your shorts during this entire move, you probably weren't able to hold. If you're waiting for a signal to take some profits and maybe get short, there you go and there's your payment. You know, uh, I would have covered a little bit on the close, but you know, on this type of move, the good book does say, you know, you should go out. This looks more like a, a short versus a long, at least overnight. You look at the bios, um, which was a strong sector that led us off the lows, and it wound up uh, testing the 21 day, which was right here. Okay, this was your first outside reversal. Here's when you had your close below the eight day. You didn't get follow through, bounced back up, engulfed this two day range, and then boom, you had a test of the 21 day. So now we'll see what happens here. Overall, you know, you have another upper channel here, and you know, at this point, it's not a move like this. You're not always going to have a fast and furious move. And when you have a fast and furious move, there's a lot of complaining that goes on because nobody wants to buy it too quick. So now in here, you have some trades, but uh, it, it looks a, a, little, um, a little vulnerable. I always have a problem with that word, vulnerable. <laughs> anyway, here is the 50-day over here. So this is telling you right now that you, you better be careful in some of these bio names, especially if you're active for cash flow. As far as um, the XLF, you know, not really seeing much here. Um, you know, it's hugging the eight day after being above it for a while. Just, you know, the, the overall market has just lost a little momentum up here. And you're not always gonna have this pent up crazy momentum move. So you have to be that much more specific because this rally now is becoming very, very specific where you have these half and half nuts from after earnings where you really need to know what you're in and why you're in it if you're long and, and even short. You know, so if you go through some stocks in, in different sectors, I did sell my Apple today. Um, actually, <laughs> on the VTF, if you were watching, we had a nice little cute short also, but you know, that was only for a cute tactical cash flow. I did not keep it. Anyway, this was your additional move from earnings. This was a week ago. We talked about this bull flag, which gave us a nice tier two trade that I trimmed and trailed where, uh, let me get this off of here. And, and then finally, you know, um, I, trimmed my tr I trimmed and trailed my way out of the position today. And uh, it didn't really trade up here at 117, so this is a little misleading. It did go up to like 115. So everyone's like, Red Dog, Red Dog, how are you going to get back into your Apple? I'm like, you know what? Going to give it a little bit of time, see if the eight day plays catch up, kind of like what happened here after this really nice move, and see what's next. 
you know, this is really where it went to. And if we can get another sideways consolidation and the market holds in there, I'll rebuy it for another trade. But uh, right now I want to prove where I want to see that 113.30 holds. Kind of same thing with BABA. BABA, you know, had a, we, we, we all had a nice trade in this one. You know, it gave you a really nice move from uh, breaking this area here and then breaking above 92 and then breaking above the IPO high. And you know, then you had your red dog reversal right here, a wide range red dog reversal after a big move. Tells you you don't have to be overly involved here. Give it time. Let it prove itself. And for right now, it is holding the eight day, which is a moving average that it held during the course of this entire run. And we have points of reference here at 113.35 ish. So maybe another day or so here. And if it starts to turn up, I'll get back involved. If it were to take out uh, 115.63, maybe I get back involved. But for right now, this wide range candle is still in control. And you know, I'm not going to be in a, in a crazy rush. If you want to, if you sold great up here, which a lot of us did actually, you know, or traded or whatever you did or, or you got short and you covered here, you know, and, and you feel like you have to be in just in case it gaps up and takes this out, you know, before we all think it should, then be in a little bit, but only be in a little bit because you're not getting a true signal yet that it's ready to turn up. Um, as far as uh, other stocks um, that look somewhat decent, I guess, um, you know, Amazon on uh, Friday, we talked about how you should not be buying it. Some guys tried shorting it and didn't stay with it, unfortunately. But this is when it broke the downtrend. Here's when you had your red dog reversal, higher low based on the, the post earnings low. And now you have an inside day. Give this a little bit more time here and we'll see if it develops another, you know, let's see, eh, this is kind of a trend, another trend line into the 200 day, another tight flag here. To, to base more action on. But for right now, an eight day move, I don't think you need to be in a rush. Um, if you made some cute money short, congratulations. And now we'll see with time if there's another trade here. Baidu had a down day, nothing too crazy. Um, but it, I, I, you know, with the stock at highs, it's just riding the eight day. Sometimes um, it gets a little uh, erratic. And at this point, um, nobody wants to be caught holding the bag here, especially since so many people are out there talking about being all in short, who've been all in short all year or whatever. Um, <laughs> I love Uncle Carl and everything, and he's had some really good stock picks, and he's had great conviction with Apple, with Netflix, with a lot of his things. You know, but to come out and say he expects a, a stock market correction in the next three to five years, what does that mean? That the market can go up for three more years before a correction, add another few hundred handles, you know, and, and blow out everyone trying to be short? Or, <laughs> I just, you know, it's just a, one of those statements that I, I think is a headline grammar, and then every bear out there cut and pasting it all over Twitter makes me laugh even more. But at this point, and I'm not saying I'm super bullish, you know, I'm opportunistic. Um, I'm, I'm more, you know, I'm actually the most flexible slash flat equities that I've been, you know, in the past few weeks. I am long the metals though, and I am a little concerned because I haven't liked the metals all year and I've been actually pretty much bashing them the way some people bash uh, high beta names. But at this point, I think that there is a reason to be in them. You know, you look at the GLD, and you look at this wide range bar, okay, and then today, a lot of people would have liked a gap up, kind of like me, but it didn't happen. You had an inside day. And you had an inside day in the upper third. In the morning call today, I talked about how, you know, if you use your Fibonacci retracements, okay, you, um, you want to see it hold higher to see what type of commitment. And the Fibonacci retracement would be like this as of today, okay, because um, it could go a few more days. I hope not. It held the 25% retracement, which is showing that there is commitment to this type of outside day. So you have a, first of all, it, you had this wedge here that we talked about, so which gave a lot of time on Friday, which was nice. So you have an outside day that engulfed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten days. So that does show you some power. So if gold can't hold here and go sideways and then take out Friday's high at some point in the next, just say, two, three sessions, I don't think it's ever going to happen. And then it'll just be the same story for gold that we've seen. You know, you go to the weekly chart. I've talked about this so many different times. And, you know, and there's been so many clues to, to, to be out, you know, to be short. Um, you had this big trend here that broke. You know, when you had an, also a wedge here, you had another wedge here. And then you had macro support break at 150-ish. I remember that trade. That was probably one of my best trades last year, short. And, uh, and then it broke below here. But this time I kind of felt as if, um, you know, everyone in the world said it had to go below a thousand. So usually everyone in the world isn't always right. So you go back to the daily chart and, um, the, the good book says, you know, to, to, to be in some, 
and then hopefully it happens intraday where it takes this out and we could add to it and then maybe you get a retest of the 116.40 and then we'll revisit. SLV looks pretty similar. You know, you had your wide range bar. It's been absolutely annihilated. <laughs> look who's a, look where, you know, this has come from. I remember, you guys remember this pain trade right here? Oh, I remember being short in here and telling people, don't buy, don't buy, when Alex still was my, my uh, uh, co-host. I was actually um, short that for a lot of that. But anyway, here's that wedge that wound up giving you a macro move downward, and then it's just continued, and here you are down here <laughs> with silver. You go to the daily chart, and again, just as a tactical trade, I'm not calling a monster, uh, you know, um, historical bottom in silver, but you did get a, here too, uh, an engulfing wide range bar that definitely squeezed some shorts and got some people in, and now it is trying to digest, and if it could hold above this area, you would think you'd get another move maybe at some point to fill this gap. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see. You know, this says be long or, do, or not be short, at least for now. You know, if tomorrow we walk in and the metals are gapped down or that gold's down 15 bucks and silver's down and it's a trap, you know what, somebody kick me in the you-know-what if you see me trading <laughs> the metals overnight again because the metals are erratic, they are random, and they've been that way all year. So let's just hope tonight that's not an, another one of those nights. Um, you know, G Pro was decent and then faded at the end of the day. Uh, it's still, you know, a little wishy-washy, but overall the pattern is um, a little bit better. Uh, I listed it as a buy above this last week and, you know, hit resistance right around here. So we'll see uh, if it could hold, go sideways a little bit and perhaps try again. Um, Tesla, it was weaker today. Um, just, it doesn't get as streaky as it used to be. It gave you a nice trade when it cleared this. Um, wedge pattern. So I'd say, you know, only be in this as long as it stays above this 249.50-ish. Maybe it's just an inside day and turns up tomorrow. We'll see. Um, I will say, I, I gotta be, you know, you have to be kind of happy if you traded uh, Virgin. Okay, <laughs> trade Virgins. <laughs> okay, the airline that came public on, uh, on uh, Friday. Because it's good to see a piece of business work where if you were involved in the deal, you did well. If you traded the art of the first day, when you, if you wrote down 2750 was like the opening high print and bought it through that, you got paid on Friday. And then if you took it home Friday into today, you know, you had your day too. And now at this point, I don't know how, you know, how much more it's going to give you, but you, you want to take notice to see if things act well on day one of an IPO because it's a good, just tactical trade to make some cash flow. And this was a, you know, a nice uh, tactical trade. You could have bought it even today above 31 and it gave you another few percentage points. At this point, if you're still in it, okay, I am done with it. I was in it overnight, didn't trade it great today, but um, we had a nice success on the day one. So it's good to see it happen. Now to keep this on the radar for something in the future. Congratulations, Richard. Um, that's really it. I'm not gonna you know, go over, there's not much to go over. I feel like if you're heavy, heavy short here, you know, you probably are a little nervous. The same way if you're heavy, heavy, long here. <laughs> I'd be a little nervous. So what does that mean? Don't be heavy, heavy. <laughs> Have a little left on on things that you like, you know, if you're trailing them. Because sometimes you can be cute. Like if Apple gaps up tomorrow and just runs, I probably won't have it. And I'll be like, oh, you know, I sold it well today, but I didn't get back into it. So you can't always be cute and, and be out of it when there's a little bit of weakness and it flags. Um, but if you're, you know, if you're short because the Russell is, blow the eight day and you're short the spiders or you're short retail or you're short whatever it is, um, just be careful out there. The markets have been strong. We, you know, a lot of things have been thrown at the tape and been absorbed. But um, I, again, wouldn't be all in here as we've come very far and it's you know, only not even a month since, just about a month since we hit that low or 200 plus handles higher. Doesn't feel like we can go down, obviously, until we do. But you know, we haven't closed below a prior low. We haven't broke any trends. And, just keep, keep making money and sticking with uh, your process and keep working on it because that's what I try and do every day. And I am doing something different being in these metals with a decent amount of size as I have hated them all year, but it seems like there's another trade to go. But we shall see. Have a great night.